This is a podcast of Scripps Institution of Oceanography at UC San Diego. To learn more about how you can support Scripps, visit us online at scripps.ucsd.edu. As one of the most volcanically active places in the world, Iceland's landscape is dotted with bubbling mud pots, exploding geysers, and fresh lava flows that ooze alongside older lava stacks, eroded by Ice Age glaciers and laced with moss. For David Hilton, a geochemist at Scripps Institution of Oceanography at UC San Diego, this rugged landscape provides an ideal vantage point to peer inside the earth. His work on the Icelandic hotspot is advancing scientific understanding of our home planet by helping to explain the natural forces driving these incredible attractions. Iceland is a very special place because it sits astride the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. So it combines a spread-in environment where new material is brought up from the mantle and spreads between two plates. And it also includes a hotspot so this is anomalous melting of the mantle, producing very large volumes of lava, and consequently, Iceland sticks out from the ocean. It's an island, as opposed to being part of the mid-Atlantic submarine ridge. So Iceland is accessible to us. We can go there. We can study both processes which occur on the sea floor, and we can study processes associated with hotspot volcanism. Iceland's volcanic fury is the result of both diverging tectonic plates and the simultaneous action of a stationary, fountain-like plume of material from deep inside the Earth's mantle. The geochemical signatures locked in rocks erupting from the island's 30 active volcanoes, along with geothermal fluids seeping out from below the surface, offer the scientists unprecedented access to Earth's interior as it rises to the surface at the Icelandic hotspot. Iceland is very unusual because normally it would be part of the submarine mid-Atlantic ridge. But something is under the source of Iceland to produce so much melting such that it now is emerging over sea level. And people think that this is a hotspot. And one of the tests that we want to do is with our isotopes is to see how much primordial material is contributing to the Icelandic hotspot, and indeed really to test if this material is stored in a different part of the mantle than is normally sampled at mid-ocean ridges. Is it stored in the deeper mantle? And if it is stored in the deeper mantle, well, perhaps we do need a plume to transfer it from the deeper mantle to the surface. There are two types of samples, as I said, rocks and, and fluids. The rocks, we, we collect the rocks in the field. You know, we break off a piece of rock, transport it back to the laboratory here at Scripps. We pick out the constituent minerals of interest, be they olivines or pyroxenes, and then we crush these minerals in a vacuum system to release the volatiles. On the other hand, when we sample the, uh, the mud parts and the hot springs, we collect the fluids. We collect it with a funnel. So we use a, an evacuated glass bottle and we take the gas coming from the mud pots into the gas bottle, trying to avoid air contamination. And again, we transfer the bottles back to the lab, extract the gases, purify the gases in both cases, and then let the gases into the mass spectrometer for, for isotopic analysis. At the Scripps Fluids and Volatiles Lab, the team is unleashing primordial gases trapped as minerals inside Iceland's rocks. These gases will help the researchers gaze into the Earth's mantle, where they can travel through time to study early Earth and the origin of the hotspot. We target a whole bunch of different kinds of isotopes. We, we target helium isotopes, neon isotopes, carbon isotopes, and nitrogen isotopes. And each isotopic system gives us different information. For example, helium isotopes is very sensitive at tracing material from the time the Earth accreted, 4.6 billion years ago. Helium-3 in particular, the rare isotope of, of helium, is not produced by the Earth. So any helium-3 that we have today was captured at the time the Earth was formed. So it's a very sensitive tracer of early material on Earth. In contrast, other uh, isotope systems, such as carbon and nitrogen, 
uh, reflect recycled material, which has gone back into the mantle. So the isotopic composition of nitrogen, for example, tells us about material which was at one time at the surface of the Earth and has been subducted into the mantle and has re-emerged in the Icelandic uh, hotspot. But now we want to use this mass spectrometer to study nitrogen isotopes. So basically we want to measure the ratio of the uh, nitrogen 15 to nitrogen 14. But this is not essentially straightforward because the, in the material that we are using, nitrogen is, is in fairly low concentrations. It's on the scale of parts per million. So it's, uh, it's fairly low concentrations. And since a nitrogen is a trace gas in these samples, we need to uh, take away all the gases which are not relevant to us in these studies. So we need to uh, take our samples and process them through all this line, all this line here you see in front of us by reacting, by taking out all the reactive gases. And once we have isolated the nitrogen by taking it through this line here, we inlet it into the mass spec where we can measure directly the ratio of the two isotopes of nitrogen. The Scripps team will continue to analyze the samples collected in the newly developed instrument in hopes of revealing a more complete story on the planet's origins and to uncover what mechanism deep inside the Earth is driving Iceland's geological hotspot activity. We're just at the early stage of running real samples, but this is really exciting, yeah. exciting work and has a lot of potentials in, in all sorts of studies that have to do with the Earth's mantle. This has been a presentation of Scripps Institution of Oceanography at UC San Diego.